Lord, we ask that that which you have in stock for us be made available in the name of Jesus Christ. Lekuria bahandi zukutushala na bukazike le bukute kutokaria bahandi zaka yemroka saka demarakudi mahande kezika taba zende predu kuzufta ba ile boza katia I like you to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit tonight because the Lord has a lot to offer us in the name of Jesus. Take over from here, Holy Spirit. Bless us irrecoverably in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God's people say, Amen. Amen. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. The Bible says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nurseries the breath of life and man became a living soul which man are we talking about here genesis chapter 1 verse 26 and god said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let us let them have dominion look let us let them have dominion in the mind of God, God already seen multitude of men over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping things that creepeth upon the face of the earth. Verse 27 says, So God created man in his own image and in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. Koradi Today, I will be re-engineering destinies and I will bring out the real man. There will be some recreation that will be taking place from within the souls of men that will hearken to the voice of God, says the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. So Genesis chapter 2 verse 22 and 23 says, And the reed which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman. So you realize that the man was already formed before the woman was formed and brought her unto the man. Notice here there is a difference between man being created and the man. In many cases when the Bible talks about the man, the Bible speaks about the aspect of a woman or the father of the woman. And Adam said, This is now the bone of my bones and the flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. So man was a complete creation of God before God brought out the woman from him. So you see that the woman was brought out of man by God intentionally. Okay, so like some used to say that a woman is a man with a womb. Okay, <laughs> so there's a difference between man and the man. Man is the living soul. All right, the man became man became the man when God gave him a wife. And there are a number of scriptures that shows us what God expects from every man. So every living soul, it's a man. And that includes the woman. That includes a woman in a man. All right? It's a mystery that is simple that you can easily understand. So as long as you have a living soul, as long as you are a living soul, you are a man. But the moment you come out of your mother's womb in the gender of a female you are now subject to authority of the man which is your father or your husband when you get married matthew chapter 4 you will soon understand why this is so matthew chapter 4 verse 4 says but he answered and said it is written man shall not live by bread alone you see it's not saying the man here it's a man every living soul is made not to live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. 
And in Genesis chapter 4, verse 26, man, in multitude, now men began to call upon the name of the Lord. And in Genesis chapter 6, verse 6, the Bible says, It repented the Lord that he has made, he had made man, he created human beings on earth, and it gripped him at his heart. God regretted because the thoughts and the imagination of the acts of man was continually evil, according to verse 5. So we saw that there is a difference between human, that is called man, created on the earth, and the man who is either a father, the father, or the husband. Glory to God forevermore. Or the man God uses. <laughs> So for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. Matthew chapter 19 verse 5. So you see the definition of the man or a man, which is different from man in general terms. You find the same rendition in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1 and Mark chapter 10 verse 7. Hallelujah. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3, I love it so much and it, it, it simplified this for us. But I would have you know that the authority of every man is Christ. And the authority of the woman, you see the difference now, there is a the woman here, is the man, the husband, or the father. And the authority over Christ is God Almighty. All of these foundations will make sense very shortly. The man was not deceived, but the woman was in, in the transgression according to 1 Timothy chapter 2 from verse 13 to verse 15. For Adam was first formed, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived, was in the transgression. When I get here, I always like to buttress it to let you know that the devil made several attempts to deceive Adam, to make Adam work against the will of God, and he failed. But the devil did his own work very well to know that the desire of the man was to the wife, and he saw that the man's weakness was his wife. And he had to come through Eve, who was very cheap for the devil to take, and used her to make the man disobey God. All of this foundation will make sense very soon. Please follow me. I know why I am coming in this dimension. So that when I hit it at the center, you will be able to put all the pieces together. Come and say amen. So who is the man that God created? The gender called man is an entity of God made to be in subjection to God and to be the representative of God on the earth. When God made Adam, he gave him commandment. When God made Adam, he told him to be in charge of the world. A lot of justice has been done to this yesterday in our series that we were taking on how you can understand, how you can know your purpose, destiny, and fulfill it. So you need to get that teaching if you are yet to get it. You just check our catalog on YouTube or Facebook. You'll be able to get that teaching. So the man is defined by God by his affinity for God's presence. What did I say, everybody? The man is defined by God. The man, gender man, by his affinity for God's presence. So also is man created by God. God created man for his presence. And when he separated the woman from the man, the honors now rest on the woman under the leadership of God and by personal discretion and by divine orchestration to determine who she will submit her destiny to in a husband. We're coming back to that. So the man God made, he made him to function at his best in 
his presence. So there is no man that can ever achieve all that God wants him to achieve if that man does not know how to sustain the presence of God. It does not matter how wealthy you are right now. It does not matter what you call success. Your destiny, your purpose can never be fulfilled when you do not know how to sustain the presence of God continually in your life as a man. So the man, the gender man, when I say man from now, you understand what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the masculinity. The man was created to hear from God and execute only the will of God on earth. <laughs> so the man was made an authority of God on the earth. And it will, it will surprise you how much power God gave to Adam. Like I showed you yesterday how the devil stripped him of that power and everything you see the devil in is the opposite of what Adam was supposed to be doing. We thank God for Jesus who came forth and made it right. Come and say amen. God will not argue with the man whatever the Whatever the man wants to do on earth, God will not argue with man. Because God has given man the earth to dominate, to rule. And the man, ignorantly by the tactics of the devil, lost that dominion and authority to the devil. And again, Jesus got it back for us. And yesterday you saw that God did not just send Jesus to save us from our sins, he also sent him to deliver the earth dominion authority back to man that's why he was called the last Adam. hallelujah in genesis um uh, chapter number two from verse 19 so you saw that whatsoever name adam called the animals that's the name god approves that tells you the owner of the earth and everything therein now has been given to was given to adam and whichever way Adam deemed it fit to administer with the leadership and authority of God was approved by God. Hallelujah. I want to show you something quickly. When you read Numbers chapter 30 from verse 2 to verse 5. Numbers chapter 30 from verse... In fact, the entire chapters of Numbers chapter 30. There you will see another pointer to the power that God gave the masculinity. God made the man a king. God made the man a lord. God made the man a master. More of this is seen more in the fathers. But less of it is seen in husbands. Hallelujah. And we owe, and I pray, and I know by this teaching, God by the Holy Ghost, we begin to sequence this understanding into our spirit man as men to begin to live the way God ordained us to live. And we will change the world in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So when you read Numbers chapter 30, you see the Bible says, When a woman make a vow, and the father did not refuse that vow, even though he knows about it, God will wait for the father for a while. If the father of that girl or woman did not refuse that vow, the Lord says that vow will stand, because the silence of the father is an approval of the father. And the Bible says, if the woman is married, now that's where you see that when you get married, your spiritual authority changes from your father to your husband. Women that are privileged to be hearing this, save it. And the Bible says, when your husband knows or heard about that vow, and he did not refuse that vow, God will wait for him for a while. If you he kept quiet over the vow that you have bound yourself to pay to the Lord. The Bible says God will deem his silence as an approval because the authority of execution on earth by the woman is given to the man who is the authority over her life, either her father or the husband. So fathers are kings, husbands are kings. Fathers are masters, husbands are masters, fathers are lords, husbands are lords. To a woman, 
Hallelujah. <laughs> I wish, I think I can read this verse to you because not many people knows what is in this chapter in number 30 of numbers. Let's go on. If a man vow a vow unto the Lord and or swear, because herein also you will see that a divorced woman does not have such commandment, whatever she vowed to the Lord, she must pay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because she has no authority over her now, but the authority of God. Glory to God. And this will begin to interpret the New Testament teachings unto you also, where the Bible says the woman must submit to her own husband as unto the Lord, as it is fit in the Lord, as Christ submit to the church. I mean, as the church, rather, submits to Christ. Glory to Jesus. Are you with me, everybody? Thank you, Holy Ghost. We give you praise tonight. So Numbers chapter 30, let's go on. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. If a man vow a vow unto the Lord, verse 2, or swear or an oath to bind his soul with a bond, he shall not break the, his word. He shall do according to all that proceeded out of his mouth. Do you see that the man, whatever he says, he must do because his direct authority is Christ and he cannot say, it's a mystic. You will also realize that the earth was not taken away from Adam until he ate the fruit. Eve, whatever Eve has done, had no basis until Adam approved it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If a woman, verse 3, also vow a vow unto the Lord and bind herself by a bond, being in her father's house, being in her father's house, in a youth, note that clause. And a father hear a vow, and a vow, and a father hear the vow, and a bond where we she has bound herself, and so, and a father shall hold his peace with her. Then all her vows shall stand, and every bond where we she has bound her soul shall stand. But if a father disallow, if a father disallow, if a father disallow, how can a man disallow <laughs> what a woman has promised to God? He has the power to do so. And God we have no choice than to submit to what the man has orchestrated. If the father disallow her in the day that he hear it, not any of her vow or of her bonds wherewith she has bound her soul shall stand. And the Lord shall forgive her because her father disallowed her. This is by blinker principle. This is not talking about Old Testament principle because the law of God is now written in her heart by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And if she, she had a husband, if she is married, when she vowed a, or uttered out, out of her lips wherewith she bound her soul, and her husband ate it and held his peace with her in the day that he heard it, then a vow shall stand if the husband says nothing. And a bond where she bound her soul shall stand. But if her husband disallow her on the day that he heard it, then he shall make a vow which she vowed, and that which she uttered with her lips where which she bound her soul of no effect. <laughs> Raquel Abahanda. And the Lord shall forgive her. Who? No. If my wife made a promise to God and I come forward and say, honey, that, that promise is, is not happening. You think you have sinned against the Lord. The Bible says, because I cancel it, the Lord will forgive you. Hallelujah. But every vow of a widow and of her that is divorced, can you see now the spiritual authority we are talking about? And this is why you must not argue what is written in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 about spiritual authority. And what is written in a few other places that talks about woman's submission. Because these are the ordinances of God. These are the statutes of God eternally. But every vow of a widow and of her that is divorced. Why? Because the husband of the widow is God. <laughs> Hallelujah to Jesus. So that's the authority over the widow. And the divorce has direct now authority of God over her life. She has left her father's house and she has also left the husband. Or the husband left her. So she is directly under the authority of God now. Glory to God. Wherewith 
they have bound their soul shall stand against her. All of these things will make sense. Let's go on. Please be patient. You will be able to understand. Hallelujah. And if she vowed by staying in her husband's house or bound her soul by a bond with an oath, and her husband held it and held his peace with her and disallowed her not, then all her vows shall stand. And every bond wherewith she has bound her soul shall stand. But if her husband had utterly made them void on the day he had them, then whatsoever proceeded out of her lips concerning her vows or concerning the bonds of her soul shall not stand. Her husband had made them void. Can, I, can you hear what the Lord is saying? A man has the power to void, to void any vow, anything you made before the Lord. He can void it. And the Lord shall forgive her. Every vow and every binding oath to afflict the soul, her husband may establish it or her husband may make it void. But if her husband altogether hold his peace with her from the day, from day to day, then he establishes all her vows, all her bounds which are upon her. He confirms them because he held his peace with her in the day that he heard them. But if he shall in any way make them void after he have heard them, then he shall bear her iniquity. These are the statutes which the Lord commanded Moses between a man and his wife, and between the father and his daughter, being yet in a youth in a father's house. So God created man as an authority on earth. And you need to begin now to understand why the Bible says women must submit to their own husband as it is fit in the Lord and as if it is the Lord, as unto the Lord. Because you please God by pleasing the man. The problem now comes when you are under a wrong man. This is where you need advanced wisdom. <laughs> Hallelujah. So God has made you as a man. He made you a God on the earth. So the man God created was so created only to receive his will, willingly. God will never force his will on you as a man. But he created you as the God on this earth so that you can enforce his will on earth. Beginning from your family. Beginning from yourself. Hallelujah. So the man God created was meant to best function in his presence. So the day Adam went and took the fruit from the devil, I told you I'm coming back to show you that the fruit we are talking about is not guava, it's not apple, <laughs> it's not granadilla. You remember Jesus Christ said, I am divine, my father is the husband man. And then um, you, oh, glory to God, I don't want to go there. So well, we'll come back there some other time. So the man God created is a leader. God created a leader in you as a man. The Bible says, in the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy and at his right hand are pleasures, are pleasures forevermore. Glory to Jesus. Mr. Man, you are not a man by eating more food than anybody in the house. You are not a man because of the organ of manhood you carry. You are not a man because of your muscles. You are a man because you are a, a, addicted to God. What makes you a man indeed is your affinity, addiction only to God, to do the will of God. What defines a true man is a man that knows his way to God's presence and that can sustain God's presence, that receives only the will of God so that he can enforce it on earth through his children, through his wife, and through the pursuit of his destiny. That is what defines a man. So the man that God is looking for is the man I just described. Are you that kind of a man? Because God made man to enforce his will on earth. Are you that kind of a man? And 
their single sister divorced, hoping to marry, is that the man you are looking for? Because you now you are now crazily desiring to marry just anything, then you will regret it. Like I used to say humorously, when you marry the son of the devil, Satan will be your father-in-law and he is at liberty to afflict you with anything he wants. Let women who have suffered in the hands of their father-in-law, the devil, tell you their story. You will, you will never, for, for a second, seek to marry a man that does not fear God. So what did God make in a man? God made himself in a man. And who is God? God is a father. Who is God? God is a husband. God is a supplier. God is a provider. So any man that is not representing God in that dimension, as, oh, can I say this to me? The Bible says, he that does not make provision for the day of his household is less than a man. Why? Because when God made you, he made you a provider. When God made Adam, and when, even when God sent Adam and Eve, out of the garden of Eden, he gave him a job to make provision for a day of his household. Hallelujah. So the, the loss of Eden was a great loss. Because in simplicity, the loss of Eden was the loss of the presence of God. The loss of Eden was the loss of what actually defines the man. And any man that cannot find his way back to Eden, the presence of God, can never be a total man. That is why you have so many confused men in the world today. That is why you have so many disaster fathers. That's why you have men who are beating women. That is why you have, you have men who are abusing women all over the place because these are men that does not understand what it means to be men. There is no way you can be a man and do what God will not do to a woman, to your children and to your wife. One of the reasons why I made this meeting open for women to attend is because when the Holy Ghost gave me the topic, I knew immediately women must hear this so that they will be here to run away from you who is not going to be man of God's presence. <laughs> and these things will make sense, I'm telling you, as we proceed quickly. Holy Spirit, thank you. <laughs> this is Ariya Malakanda. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. So when man lost the garden of Eden, he lost dominion, he lost the presence of God, he lost the tangibility of what makes a man. And Jesus now has restored the glory of man back to man in Christ Jesus. So every man that is truly in Christ Jesus, and who follows the example of, who follows the dictates of God, who becomes a man of God's presence again, will redefine manhood as manhood is ordained by God. Hallelujah. So every true man in Christ who discover what makes a man will make the right father, the right husband, the right purpose pursuer. Hallelujah. So in simplicity again, what makes a true total man? The answer is the fear of God. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 13 says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. To fear God and to keep his commandment is what? The whole duty of man. There is nothing else that makes a man other than walk in the fear of God, whoo, other than walk in the fear of God and to do the commandments of God. You see, because God can be respected by man on earth, God needs man to allow him to function on this earth the way he desired. And Jesus Christ became that man that came to fully show us how God wants man to function. And to fear God means you honor him, you respect him, you want only his will to be done. To fear God means you seek only to please him. Are you that kind of a man? Every wife is given by God to help the man to fulfill his will. The duty of the man is to do what? To 
do the commandments of God. That is why the Bible says, a prudent wife is from the Lord. So if you end up with a man that do not do the will of God, you have ended up with disaster. That is why Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, speaking to the, those who already made a mistake to marry an ungodly person, and he said, okay, remain there when you, if he's willing to, to, to live with you as long as he's allowing you to do the will of God, you see what I'm talking about. Nobody is forcing you to remain with an unbeliever. Listen carefully. If that unbelieving man will still not allow you, is not willing, is not willing to live with you because of your faith, the Bible says, let him go. The brother or a sister is no longer bound. She is free to remarry. He is free to remarry only in the Lord. And in this context, you also need advanced wisdom. We need to understand the circumstances that surrounds your marriage that we might be able to customize the word of God for you. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. So what am I saying in essence? You cannot afford, particularly single, single ladies, you cannot, you are not the Holy Ghost. You are dating someone that is not of God and you are saying you are praying for him that he will be saved. Let him be saved before you marry him. Hallelujah. <laughs> you can't love the son of the devil and, and you want God to endorse it. It doesn't work like that. Hallelujah. And again, this is why Paul told Timothy, let the older women teach the younger women in the church. Because from their experiences of affliction and blessing, they will be able to pass on wisdom into young people. Hallelujah. So therefore, do not marry a man who doesn't know the will of God for his life. What did I say? Daughters, don't marry a man who doesn't know the will of God for his life. Don't marry a man who doesn't know how to find out the perfect will of God. Do not marry a man that is not under the authority of God. It's because God gives wife only to the man of his presence. God gave Adam Eve in his presence. But Adam became carried away by love and romance and forget the ordinances of God and follow the dictates of his wife. It's a, it's a disaster. It was a disaster. And I'm going to hope to try to explain that disaster to you today. So, hallelujah. And this was where Eve missed it big time. She worked against a ministry. Men, I know some of us men understand what I'm about to say. The Bible says two cannot work together except they be agreed. Sailor, I won't break that statement down. But men, you understand what I'm talking about. There is a vision, there is a purpose of God for your life, but you ended up with a woman who doesn't understand your vision, who doesn't understand your purpose, who doesn't understand your God. Wisdom is required. So Eve did not understand, in actual fact, Eve worked against a ministry as a helper. The job of the woman who is married is to help the man to achieve the will of God. Now, this is Eve helping the devil to destroy her husband. <laughs> this was Eve walking against the will of God, the opposite of what she was made for. You know why the devil loves women? For this reason. The devil knows that it was easier for a woman, it is easier for a woman to mislead the man. When the man loves him, loves her. And this is why God's children, God's daughter, need also to understand their role. That your job is to look unto the man and say, my Lord, my King, what is God saying? If the man has nothing to say about God, your job as a woman is to go pray and say, Father, I am here to do your will. 
I'm here to help this man do your will. He doesn't know your will. Speak to him that he might speak to me. When you know the will of God as a woman and your head does not know it, you are restricted, you are limited until the man knows the perfect will of God and it is your job as a helper to help him to know. Not that you are just following like Dundee United. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. I know. I know tonight is going to be a bit tough, but I'm going to tell you the truth of God's word anyway. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. <laughs> Woo. So this was where Eve missed it big time. And I pray for you as God's daughters, you will not miss it with your men. Men, when you read Proverbs chapter 31, woman, you will realize that she was a different kind of woman. You realize that the heart of her husband safely trust in her. He shall have no need of spoil. Every man of destiny is looking for that kind of a woman. Glory to Jesus. And you read on her husband praises her. Why? Because she's helping the man to achieve destiny. You realize that the husband is one of the elders at the gate. Be that kind of woman. And in the power of womanhood, we are going to break this down for you. So, man of God, in fact, every husband and every father must be a man of God. Must be a prophet of God because he must continually receive from God to deliver to the children. How can you be a father? You have children that you don't know what their destiny is all about. You are a disappointment. How can you be a father? You don't know the direction. You are a disappointment. If you are broke, there is no money. As a father, if you can hear from God, the Holy Ghost will show you the strategy to make the money. So evidently, if things are not working in your life as a man, it is because you have lost focus of what makes things work for men. God, fear of God, is the only major thing that makes things work for men. I believe you are hearing what God is saying. Hallelujah. So as a man, you must walk continually in the fear of God, prioritizing and seeking only the perfect will of God. You know why the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 of a woman, because men like being bossy sometimes. Hey, Bible says submit, submit. Have you heard from God? What am I submitting to? And you, woman, must you submit to stupidity of the highest order? But if you're ready with a man who doesn't know how to hear God, you have no choice. But if your husband is supposed to be a Christian and he still has no solution, find a wise way. Every wise woman build a house, the foolish one block it down with her hands. Instead of, you, instead of you to insult him and speak like one of the foolish women, find a way to push him back to God. Go on your knees in your closet and pray him into the will of God. Because you are here to do the will of God. Not some stupid instruction. He comes out home with empty spiritual brain asking for food that he didn't make money to make available. That's not what makes a man. And if you are any more than your mind, it's a function of, it's a test of your humility. It's a serious test of your humility. And some men are very foolish. The moment the woman is any more than them, they relax. You become a bread loser. The woman is the breadwinner. No, that's not what makes a man. And a real man will never be jealous of a woman that hates more than him. In fact, he takes it up as a challenge. Some foolish men will say, that's my blessing. I will... <laughs> and relax. You are the head. You are the provider. Whatever she's coming to do is to support. And if God has deemed it fit to give her a better income than yourself, it does not reduce your efficiency as a man to do what is needful of you. You go continually to receive direction before the Lord to move your family, to move your children, to move your wife forward. When you find a real man, you find a progressive life. You find a progressive family. And I'm sure, I'm very sure women are nodding their head for this one. Say, man of God, please tell them. I'm telling both of you. Hallelujah. I'm telling both of you. Glory to Jesus forever, man. Come and say amen. So any man who doesn't fear God, any man who doesn't hear from God, 
does not deserve a woman, does not deserve a daughter. Because the whole essence is for you to be able to lead this family, this woman, this, this children into destiny. That is your ultimate requirement of any man. That will be your anchor anytime, any day. Women who have found themselves in marriages with men who do not fear God have a tale to tell you of miserabilities, frustrations that are beyond utterances. In Psalm 25 verse 14, the Bible says, The secret of the Lord is with them that fear Him, and He will show them His covenant. God is looking for man of His presence. God is looking for man. What makes you a man? You eat the biggest meal, you eat the biggest... You, why should you eat the last meat in the pot when your children has not eaten? As a provider, are you supposed to do that? <laughs> you are supposed to turn into fasting and prayer to bring solution to increase pro pro provision tomorrow. You are a leader. As a man, God is looking for that kind of man who will take spiritual leadership in his family. Who will take financial leadership in his family. And as long as you are able to hear from God, it's just a matter of time. You will be repositioned as a complete man like I will show you shortly. Psalm 112 verse 1 says, Praise ye the Lord, and I want you to follow me carefully and see the man that God is describing here. And it is my prayer that you will turn out to be this man in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Even if you are with the wrong man right now, God can turn it around because there is nothing impossible with God. If you as a woman will go on your knees and say, Lord, I am here to do your will. I cannot be tormented by this son of the devil. Lord, make him my evangelism others. Save this man. Let him become a man of your presence. I know your father will answer you. But when he turns up, you say you can do that prayer outside his home before we carry your coffin or your dead body. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man that fears God. That delights greatly in the commandment of God. Are you see what I'm talking about? This is the kind of man God is looking for. The man that is forever seeking the perfect will of God in every situation. Your children are going to school. You don't even know what God is saying. Which school they should go? You are doing permutation and combination. Peter, pay, Paul, Paul, pay, Peter. I will throw the coin if, if it is earth, that means it is first school. If it is the, that's how to be foolish. The man that fears God, that delights in the commandment of God. Look at what the Bible says. The first thing is that his children shall be mighty upon the earth. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. Your children shall be mighty in the name of Jesus. But if you want to see mighty children, it comes from the Father that fear God. The generation of this man shall be blessed. You will not see his children involved in robbery. You will not see his children involved in homosexuality, in sex work. You will not see his children becoming miserable. The children of this man shall be mighty. Mark the mark, behold the upright. Mark the righteous. His end shall be peace. Why? He has led his children in the way of the Lord. Train up a child in the way that they should go. When they grow up, they will not depart from it. The word of God never fails. Unto the upright there arise light in darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. Verse 5. A good man showed favor and lend it. This man is a giver because he hears from God. He will guide his affairs with what? Discretion. Number six, verse six. Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be an everlasting remembrance. You can't forget this man. He shall be, he shall not be afraid of evil tidings. Come on. If a man is committed to hearing God continually, it does not matter what the economic situation is saying, what the evening news are saying, what CNN is saying. What BBC is saying, what South African TV broadcast is saying, or Namibian Broadcasting Network is saying, 
or Nigerian Television Authority, he will never be moved by all those things <laughs> because he has had a better news before they share their own. His heart is fixed, trusting the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid. The most afraid person in your home is even your father or the husband until he sees his desires upon his enemies. He had dispersed, he had given to the poor, his righteousness endureth forever. His own shall be exalted with honor. The wicked shall see it and be grieved. They will see how God is lifting this man and they will be grieved. He shall gnash his feet and melt away the desire of the wicked shall perish. You shall be this man in the name of Jesus. I pray your father, your husband shall be this man in the name of Jesus. Psalm 92 verse 9 to 15 says, you can read from verse 9, but let me go straight to verse 12. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. Who is this righteous man? The man that delights in the commandment of the Lord. You remember, blessed is the man that sits not in the seat of the scoffer, nor stand in the ways of sinners, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. He need not to meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water, that brings forth his fruit in its season. His leaf also shall not wither. Whatsoever he does shall prosper. There is no way. There is no way you will be poor hearing from God. There is no way, man of God, man of God, there is no way, there is no way you are a man of his presence and you remain poor. There is no way, there is no way you are meditating upon the word of God day and night and you will not prosper. Joshua 1 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. Thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Man, be a man by hearing from God. What makes a man is a man of God's presence. You must come out after three days fasting and prayer and say, my wife, my children, God has told me what to do. This is the business to do now. That is what makes a man. Not sitting down while you do. That's what makes a man. Be a man. By being a man of his presence, he that does not make provision for day of his household has denied the faith and is worse, is worse, is worse than an infidel. There is no other secret than his presence. Man of God, man of God, his presence. And when I say man of God, I'm not talking about your pastor, your bishop, I'm talking about you as a man. His presence. Be a man of His presence. All the answers to your life issues, to your children, are in His presence. Be a man of His presence. Rakote in the body of Sakata. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Blessed be your name. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. They that the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. You shall flourish in Jesus' name. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall be fat and flourishing. They shall still bring forth fruits even in old age. To show that the Lord is upright, he is the rock, he is the rock, and there is no righteousness in him. Psalm 128, as I begin to quickly try to draw the curtain, blessed is everyone that fear the Lord. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. For though thou shalt eat the labor of your hands, happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with you. Glory to Jesus. I'm, I'm reading now from Psalm 128. Powerful scripture. Powerful scripture. Every man, every man who is masculine, every male who is, who is hearing me today, Psalm 128, glory to Jesus forevermore. As I begin to draw the curtain, blessed is everyone that fear the Lord. The first thing of the man that fear God is blessing. The Lord but that walketh in the ways of God, the man that seek to do only the will of God. For thou shalt, for thou shalt eat the fruit of your labor. Happy shall thou be, and it shall be well with you. Glory to Jesus. And the next thing is, your children shall be like the olive, your wife shall be a fruitful vine. 
So this man that constantly hear from God and give proper direction for his life and destiny shall have a productive wife and his children shall be like the olive trees plant round about his stable. So women, if you want to be that fruitful vine, not just fruit of the womb, everything that you are made to be fruitful in as a woman, described by the Proverbs 31 woman, you will bear that fruit. Behold, that those shall the man be that be blessed, that fear the Lord. The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion, and thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Yea, thou shalt see your children's children, and the peace upon Israel. So, if she, so if she that is married seeks to please her husband, then you know you can only play with your life as a woman waiting to know the right man to marry if you do not marry a man that pleases God. Because if the man is not a man that hears and pleases God, you will never be able to please God. Alright? So once you settle the issue of the fear of God as a man, your purpose, discovery, and fulfillment of that purpose will become very easy for you. <laughs> I've said something powerful. You can never be purpose driven when you don't even know how to hear from God and how to please God. Because your purpose is all about receiving what God sent you to the earth to do, like I've taught you in the last two series, and execute it. So it all goes back to knowing and sustaining the presence of God and doing the perfect will of God. A man that fears God will definitely find his purpose in the midst of his commitment to obedience to God. So many of us, you know, the people in the fivefold ministry, they are more privileged than many in purpose discovery. But it is in the pro pro it is in the process of commitment to God, maybe in the church as a drama, evangelism, Bible study teacher, Sunday school teacher, you just discover that this is what you are made for. Because you're already sold out to God. Hallelujah. Number three, who is this man that is going to be the father that every child is looking for, the husband that every woman is looking for, and the man that God is looking for? It's going to be because of the fear of God, his vision and his passions are God's. Everything he thinks, everything he does is all about pleasing God, seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. This is a man that is ready to live or die to fulfill only the will of God. Is that the man that you are or aspiring to be? Number four, who is this man? You will notice that this man has got certain unique gifts and graces for the accomplishment of God's assignment. This man will realize, you will realize that he's got some gifts, he's got some capability in his life that is helping him to fulfill God's purpose for his life. You know them by their gift, by the graces of God that they are manifesting. And as a woman, you must be able to know whether you fit into the life of this particular man before you say yes, especially the single one, the divorced, single mothers, single, single ladies who have never been married. Hallelujah. And even if you have been married once you are divorced, this is a wisdom of God for you. Number five, because of the fear of the Lord, you will operate in the excellency of wisdom because as you hear from God constantly, you will just know what to do per time. Number six, because of the fear of God, you will observe diligence and faithfulness in everything that you do. These are the symptoms or signs or proofs or factors that you see in the life of a man that works in the fear of God. This man will become every woman's dream, every daughter's dream, because of the fear of the Lord. Number eight, such men are men of unequivocal faith and confidence in the Lord because he knows the source of his life, the source of his wisdom. So when you find this man that really fears God and walks in the ways of God as described above, what are the consequences that you will see in his life? I want to give you five and then I close. Number one result of him walking in the fear of God, you are a man listening to me. 
when you follow this wisdom path to you today, you will succeed with your destiny, you will succeed with your purpose, you will not live a wasted life, you will live a fruitful life, because in your pursuit of God's will, you will find purpose, you will know what to do with your purpose, you will fulfill it. Like David fulfilled the purpose of God, Jesus fulfilled the purpose of God, Saul, Paul, Apostle Paul fulfilled the purpose of God, Abraham fulfilled God's purpose, these are men that walked in the fear of the Lord. Number two, you will have a successful woman, a successful wife. Number three, as a man that walks in the fear of God, you will succeed in wealth building. You become a mighty man of wealth that, that at least unto your third generation, they are able to reap your wealth. You'll be fat and flourishing. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22, a good man. I love this scripture. Eh? Apology to all the bad men. A good man lives inheritance for his children's children. You know, African men won't like this scripture because they feel children are their pension. But my Bible says, if you are a good man, and a good man is the man that I've described since, since I started teaching you, this good man, he lives in inheritance not just for his children, even his children's children are eating from his labor. A good man lives in inheritance for his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the righteous. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 19, verse 14, house and riches are the inheritance of fathers. Who you are not hearing me. Fathers that are here, fathers to be, what are your inheritance? You won't build one, 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 one house with three rooms and all your children are fighting over it after you are done. <laughs> house and riches are the inheritance of... I've told you it is impossible for a man that hears from God to be poor. It is impossible. Why will you be? How? how? <laughs> are you trying to say to me that the wisdom of God is not going to pave way for you? No. House and riches are the inheritance from fathers. And a prudent wife is from the Lord. If you got yourself a foolish one, you never got her from the presence of the Lord. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 14, that father lay up for children and not the other way. Hallelujah. Number four, you will succeed in leaving lasting spiritual legacy for your children. God said to Abraham in Genesis chapter 18, verse 19, I know Abraham. He will command his children after him. And number five, you will succeed in raising mighty godly children who will continue your legacy after you. These five things will, will describe a man that fears God, a man, a complete man, a man that has been restored fully. And you find this kind of man only in Christ Jesus. And you, are, you, you will also be amazed that you have so many people who are calling upon the name of the Lord that this is not defining their life because they miss the number one thing, the presence of God. So this is my submission to you, my brothers, who are hearing me today. And my sister, catch some wisdom here. The Lord brought you in to be able to hear some of this wisdom. This is the wisdom of God to you today. Prioritize the presence of God above all else. Even when your wife is complaining, let her know that I need answers from the Lord. I need answers from the Lord. And like my wife will advise men, balance the equation. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. <laughs> Are you that man that God is looking for? Are you that man that every daughter, every son will be proud for? Are you that man that every wife will be proud of? And how can you be that man? his presence once you become that man of his presence you are going to cause a ripple effect in the world very soon because your sons and your daughters will learn from you and god will continually be glorified i want to submit to you here today and call you to action be the man god is looking for the man of his presence be the man your children are looking for the, a leader a father a provider a sustainer a, test, a legacy testament builder, the man that build wealth. Be the man that your wife is looking for, a leader, a provider, 
the one that tantalizes us every now and then and stop telling stories the one that makes life comfortable for them by hearing from God's strategies on how to do it there is no greater secret brothers to becoming the man your wife is looking for your children are looking for the father your children are looking for and the man God is looking for other than being consistent in God's presence you must master the presence of God because all your life depends on it I rest my case here I release you unto the hands of God I like you to begin to pray right now brothers and sisters Lord I receive grace to be this man by the reason of this word that you've sent to me today I receive grace to become the man of your presence in the mighty name of Jesus and father God in Jesus name I pray for my brothers here tonight in Jesus mighty name that let the grace of your presence to tarry continually in your presence the grace to always do strength from your presence the Bible says they go from strength to strength everyone that appears before God in Zion the psalmist says again in your presence is the fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore may every spiritual weakness and demonic influences that takes men away from your presence be destroyed in the life of my brothers under my voice right now in the mighty name of Jesus and if there be any man that has fallen short oh God let there be grace minister to them to begin to attain unto victory in becoming the man you ordain every man to be in the mighty name of Jesus are there women, children under affliction of a terrorist of a man who calls himself a father even in Christianity Lord today hear their cries and their pain I pray let this man encounter Jesus in the name of Jesus Lord I pray for the single ladies here I pray for the divorced oh God I pray for those who are qualified to be remarried Almighty God that they will marry the man of your presence in the name of Jesus father I pray for our children our sons will rise up to be this kind of men as they follow our example in the name of Jesus Lord our women shall no longer pain they shall no longer sorrow in the name of Jesus I pray for grace for women wisdom to build sons to become men and women of God in the name of Jesus men of your presence in Jesus mighty name I pray for women oh God that you have sequenced into our lives and to be sequenced into the life of the young ones yet to be married oh God that they will find the right helper of destiny in the name of Jesus thank you father for hearing us in Jesus name we pray and God's people say amen